On episode 291 of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, I share 11 home exercise equipment pieces that you should have in your home gym. You can find the full show notes for this episode at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 291. Have you decided you're ready to make a change? To reclaim your health and fitness, the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast is here for you. I'm your host, Alan Meisner. I'm an NSAM certified personal trainer with a specialization in corrective exercise and fitness nutrition. Let me be your coach as you find your way on your health and fitness journey. All right, let's go. Hello, and thank you for being a part of the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast. I uh, want to apologize. I know they tell you uh, whenever you're going to do any public speaking or whatnot, don't start with an apology. Uh, but I'm going to apologize if the sound quality for this episode is not up to par. Uh, I'm on some unexpected travel, and so I'm having to do this one from my hotel room, doing the best I can with what I can. It'd be kind of funny to walk in here. I've got uh, pillows stacked up on a table on my desk just to, uh, to try to make this work, but uh, I'm doing what I can, and I do appreciate you uh, being here, and I think you're going to enjoy this episode. Uh, I'm going to share uh, 11 pieces of uh, qu- equipment that I think everyone should try to have in their own home gym. So if you don't want to go to the gym and you want to save yourself uh, the time and expense of going to a gym and want to outfit your home, uh, I'm going to share just some basics. Uh, and the order I, I kind of list them is also kind of the order uh, that I would consider buying them uh, as you start to outfit yourself. Some very simple, some a little bit more. Uh, but as you really build out a home gym, these are pieces of equipment that you'll want to have. Um, and I actually do have each and every one of these in my home gym. Uh, so before you go out and really start buying a bunch of equipment, um, there's a few things that you need to consider. And uh, wh- what you want to do first is you want to look at what your fitness goal is. Uh, a lot of the equipment I'm going to recommend is uh, actually for building muscle uh, and building some stamina. Uh, but obviously, if you want to be a runner and you live in a bad climate, your first purchase might be a treadmill. Uh, you know, that's not on my list, uh, but it, it is something that you can consider is if, if really building muscle or maintaining muscle is not one of your key goals, uh, then my list might not be the right list for you. But I, I do want you to consider what your fitness goal is because the equipment you purchase it and the order with which you purchase it uh, can strong, is strongly determined by what your goal is. Uh, the next is how much space you have. Uh, many of us uh, have limited space, so setting up a big structure gym uh, the way we would see it maybe in a hotel or something like that might not work for us if we don't have an entire room or a large room to dedicate to a gym or a garage, uh, better yet. But if you don't have those things, then obviously uh, the equipment you purchase is going to have to fit in the space that you're there in. And I do have some equipment that will work in very small spaces, uh, even a hotel room. And then the third is what's your budget? Uh, I am linking to uh, various pieces of equipment uh, in the in the article. If you go to the show notes at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 291, you're going to see links to each of the items. Uh, those are Amazon links. Uh, I do get an affiliate commission if you click on any of those links. And if you're going to do any Christmas shopping uh, and you do want to follow through that link, it will help support the show. It doesn't cost you any more. Uh, and you don't have to purchase what I recommend. But you, if you just use that one of those links to go to Amazon, Uh, they will still give me a little bit of credit on the commission. But uh, if your budget is kind of low, one of the things you can strongly consider or should strongly consider is looking for used equipment. Uh, It doesn't happen so often in January or December, January, but a lot of times people are trying to sell uh, their old equipment. They bought it. They were all excited. uh, And then, of course, the the sheen wears off and they don't stick to it because they're not really that committed. Uh, And soon they have basically uh, equipment that's laying around their house unused. Uh, They'll often share it at a discount. Uh, You might also find some places where they sell used equipment, such as uh, play it again, sports, and whatnot. Uh, To be able to pick up used equipment, uh, it's often as good, if not uh, completely new, uh, because again, most people that buy this equipment, they don't actually use it. And I I want you to, if you're going to purchase equipment, uh, make sure you do have that commitment and you stick to it. Uh, But if you're on a budget, uh, used equipment can be hugely beneficial to you. So uh, I'm going to go over 11 things that I think you should buy uh, for your home uh, fitness center, your home gym, if you will. Uh, The first one would be uh, resistance bands. Um, A basic set of resistance bands can go for less than $30. Um, I've seen them cheaper, uh, but you do have to look at the quality. Uh, These can hurt you if they're not uh, maintained or not uh, well done. So buying a good quality set of resistance bands will let you do 
most exercises that you would want to do for a full body workout uh, and they're very convenient. You can carry them in your suitcase if you're traveling. Uh, they don't take up much space at all and you can connect them to a door frame or a uh, post and do just about anything that you want to do uh, with these bands. Uh, they go from a very, very lightweight to pretty heavy. Um, so for most people, resistance bands are a great purchase and a great bargain. Now the second item on my list, you might not have expected to see this, but um, is a jump rope. And uh, you know, when we were kids, I think jumping rope was one of those kind of things that you just you just did uh, because it was relatively easy to do. Uh, as we've gotten older, we've stopped doing those things, and so a, a good jump rope will be something that you can use to build cardiovascular uh, endurance back. Uh, you can use it for hit training, a good quick session of uh, jump ropes with little uh, intermittent uh, slowdowns or stops. Uh, is a good way to get your heart rate up, uh, to burn some body fat, and to build your cardiovascular fitness. The third item is a yoga mat. Uh, if you're going to do any exercise at all, you're going to typically find yourself getting down onto the ground, either on your knees or actually, uh, actually flat. And having a mat just makes that a little bit more comfortable, uh, so you're more likely to uh, enjoy getting up and down. Uh, and, and, and getting up and down is, is kind of a lost art uh, for many of us. We spend so much time sitting in chairs, uh, and sitting on couches, that it's it's not common for us to get up and get down off the floor. Uh, but it is something that I strongly encourage people to, to do uh, because it does help build mobility. It does help build some endurance. Uh, and if you're going to be playing with your grandkids, uh, getting on the floor down there with them is a great way to connect uh, and build a relationship that is at their eye level and something that they really enjoy. So uh, getting up and down, having a mat to do so, I think is a, is a very good uh, tool to have in your arsenal. And so just with the three things I just listed, you know, just those three would give you something to build muscle, would give you something to build endurance, uh, and obviously something where you can work on your mobility. Those three pieces of equipment all told, all together, would cost you less than $100. So for a very small investment, you have all you need to basically do home workouts. And so I'd encourage you to look at those three things. Now, if you want to step it up, because obviously at some point you're going to get stronger than the resistance bands will allow you to do, you're going to want to start actually picking up some equipment. And the first thing I'd say pick up is a set of dumbbells. Now, I discourage you from getting the adjustable ones. They just tend to be uh, big and bulky, but they also aren't very comfortable. Uh, I've never really found a set of adjustable dumbbells that really were effective for me. Uh, they just, they're just too cumbersome to try to get the weights going from a small weight to a little big weight. So what I encourage you to do is to go ahead and just buy a small set that fits your current strength for the types of exercises you want to do. So it might be that you're going to get uh, you know some, some 5 or 10 pounders for overhead presses and maybe something in the realm of 15 to 30 uh, for chest presses to begin. And then what you can do is start at, uh, buying heavier weights or you can buy little magnets that will stick onto those weights uh, and potentially just be able to in increment the weight that way. Uh, a dumbbell set of dumbbells is roughly you're going to expect if you bought them new to be about a dollar a pound. Uh, so it can get kind of expensive to buy a, a bunch of dumbbells. Uh, but they are so flexible and, and they are a great way to build strength. So uh, if you're going to get into buying some actual equipment, uh, weight equipment, uh, start with the dumbbells. Next on my list, number five, is a foam roller and a lacrosse ball. Uh, this is what we're going to use to continue to work on our mobility as we begin to build muscle and we start to get more endurance. Uh, we're going to want to add that mobility aspect to this a little bit more. And using a, a lacrosse ball and a... Um, and a foam roller are great ways for you to work on pain points in the muscles where, where the fascia is actually just a little bit uh, tight. And by loosening up those tight muscles, uh, you allow your body to become more limber and you allow your body to heal uh, from a lot of the, th the damage that you've done from uh, potentially sitting too long or just having repetitive motion injuries over the course of your life. So a good lacrosse ball and a foam roller uh, will help you work out those kinks. Uh, number six is an adjustable bench. Now this will allow you to go from flat all the way up to just about sitting up straight. Uh, the advantage of a bench along with the, the equipment of the dumbbells, you now have the capacity to do a lot more exercises uh, with this than you would if you just didn't have the bench at all. Um, so as you can see now, we've gone through six of the 11 and, and at this point, you pretty much have a fully serviceable uh, gym. 
And you can do just about anything as you kind of go through this process because you can do the bench press, you can do uh, the rows, you can uh, you know use the resistance band some, uh, you can do uh, dumbbell squats, uh, uh, you can do goblet squats. There's a lot of different things you can do now, and you have all the tools that you would need to to basically build a pretty solid fitness level. And you know most of this, if you go to a hotel gym, uh, this is going to be about the limit of what you would see in, in one of those gyms if they had weight equipment at all. So as you kind of look at it now, you have more than a standard fitness center at a hotel uh, if you just purchase these six items. And the dumbbells can get kind of expensive. Uh, at a dollar a pound, but you can buy them, you know, buy a set from somebody or you can buy um, buy them used and get them for a lot cheaper. Um, number seven on my list is uh, the barbell and weights. The barbell and the weights is kind of where we're going to start getting a little bit more into the advanced lifting. Uh, this is where we're really looking to add or retain muscle mass. And so we're going to really start doing some heavier things uh, that we wouldn't necessarily be able to do with dumbbells uh, safely. Uh, but the barbell is going to allow us to do some, some other exercises like deadlifts, potentially squats, um, clings, and presses uh, that are going to be a little bit heavier than what we would be able to do potentially with the dumbbell. So this is going to, allow again, allow us to build even more mass to get much stronger. Uh, but it's a great piece of equipment. Uh, again, with a set like this, you can pretty much expect to pay about a dollar a pound for the weights. Uh, they can go a little lower if you buy a, a complete set. Uh, I know I've bought a, a full Olympic set. Uh, it was, th I think, 330 total pounds with the bar, and, and I think I paid about $250 for that. Uh, again, buying something like that used uh, is also fine. Just make sure that it's all serviceable. The, the bar, the bar is, uh, you know, should not be bent. It should be fairly solid. It should not be rusted. Uh, and the end plates, the end pieces where the plates go on, those should have ball bearings in them that allow them to spin. And if they're able to spin, uh, that's going to make it a lot easier for you to control the weight as you're lifting it. So you want to make sure, again, if it has those ball bearings in it, and those should spin easily, uh, you may have to oil them if they've been used. Uh, but if you buy them new, they're going to be in good condition and you can keep going. Now, I talked about using the barbells to do squats. Uh, it's very difficult for you to do that after you start getting a certain uh, weight. You know, I can I can cling the bar up and I can press it up over my head and set it on my shoulders and do some squats. But the weight that I can get over my head to get into a squat position is not uh, significant enough for me on the squats. So I have a power rack. Now, a full power rack is a space hog. I, I can tell you right now. They have versions that you can actually um, you can actually fold out from your wall. So if you were going to build this into your garage. Uh, you can you can actually fasten this into the um, the studs in the house, and it will fold out to form the rack. Um, I have a full rack. It was a, a gift uh, for my family uh, for Christmas, and I, I enjoy it. It's uh, it, it allows me to lift safely, so I can do bench press, I can do squats, uh, and I don't have to have a squatter with me. Uh, I can load the weight while it's on the rack, which makes it again I don't have to get the weight over my head, so I can go full weight. Uh, on a squat with this rack, and again, it, it serves as a safety. In addition to that, uh, you know, mine has a pull-up bar. Uh, I also can attach the uh, the resistance bands to this, or TRX bands to this, uh, which I'll talk about later. And those are a great way for me to continue to add variety to my workout. So at this point now, I have pretty much a whole gym set up uh, just in my little garage. Now. Number nine on my list is kettlebell, kettlebells. Uh, kettlebells are awesome. And unlike dumbbells, I actually like adjustable kettlebells. I, I found several different versions that are actually pretty good uh, for you to be able to add the weight that you want to add uh, you know, with them. And, and they, they, they actually work pretty good. Uh, I'm, I'm, I've been pleasantly surprised with adjustable kettlebells. But again, with kettlebells, unlike dumbbells, uh, you tend to be doing swinging movements and clinging movements. Um, so it's a little bit different uh, than the way you would use a dumbbell. So, but I do find the adjustable kettlebells to be a, a great value and a great opportunity for you to uh, add variety to your workouts. Number 10 are TRX straps. Now, you can buy the actual TRX straps or you can buy something that's basically a knockoff of them. Uh, they are straps that have handles, pretty much allow you to do a lot of pushing and pulling movements, um, a lot of balance movements. Uh, they work well if you have a rack. Um, you can connect them over a doorway, uh, but I found the TRX straps actually 
do better when you have the ability to fasten them to something pretty solid. Uh, and with a, with a rack, you'll get many different angles uh, that you'll be able to do as you do these, uh, these things. So the pressing and pulling movements are going to use a lot of different uh, assisting muscles versus you trying to do the same thing with the bar or on the ground. Uh, you do have to maintain stability. Um, so this is going to help build balance uh, and, and make sure that you're building the muscles in the best possible way. So a good set of TRX straps um, are a really good addition to the gym uh, as were the kettlebells. And then the final thing I have on here, which you probably wouldn't think of as a piece of fitness equipment, but it's basically a, a tablet. So uh, we're talking like a Kindle Fire or an iPad. And, and the reason I, I like the, the, the tablets are they let you do a lot of different things. You know, if you're working with an online coach like myself, uh, obviously it can be a place where you can see your workouts. You can pull up the, the workout and you can see exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, you might want to look up a video. So if you're going to do a new exercise and you're not that comfortable with the form uh, on the tablet, you can go ahead and do a search for YouTube. Uh, or if you're a member of my site, you can find the exercise there and you can watch the videos and get comfortable right there watching the video to see exactly what the form is like. Uh, many of them also have video cameras so you can film yourself and watch yourself do the exercise. Um, and then finally, uh, you can actually log your, your reps and sets on the tablet so that you're keeping a good record. Um, so you know, while it's not a fitness a piece of fitness equipment itself, it can help you track and maintain and do your workouts properly uh, as a tool uh, in your workout arsenal. So as we kind of go back over this, and again, I broke it up into kind of the, the segments. So the first three items, the resistance bands, the jump rope, and the mat, they're going to give you the basics of what you, what I would think you would want to get started on a program where you're working to build strength, maintain muscle mass, and, and get some endurance exercise done. And you, these three things will let you go across the board on all of those. Next, you can add a dumbbell set. Start adding dumbbells as you get stronger. Uh, you can buy bigger ones, bigger ones, and, and get to a point where you have a full set. Uh, a foam roller and a lacrosse ball are going to help you a good way toward helping to build and maintain mobility um, and avoid injuries. And then third is the adjustable bench, which is going to give you a lot of flexibility. And at this point, you have pretty much everything you would need to build strength, build endurance, and, and, and have a good solid program. Uh, for most people, this might be full stop all you really needed for your home gym. But if you want to go further, uh, then I'd recommend you pick up the barbells and uh, the weights. Again, these can be a little bit more expensive, uh, but well worth it. A power rack, probably the largest expense of anything I have on here, uh, will allow you to do heavy exercises uh, in a safe way. Um, so there's a lot of value to having a power rack uh, because it's at this point going to allow you to do just about everything you want to do. Um, and then we get into kind of some of the specialty things with the adjustable kettlebell, the TRX straps, and then of course we wrap that all up by having something where we can log and maintain and manage our workouts uh, with the tablet, be it a Kindle Fire or a, an iPad. So I know this is a pretty quick episode, uh, but I did want to share this with you. I know you're out and about doing some shopping for the holidays, and I wanted to make sure that you had some ideas of things that uh, if you're looking to build something at home uh, and you see it, then you have the opportunity to pick it up. Before you go, I do want to ask you for a favor. If you could go to the show notes at 40plusfitnesspodcast.com forward slash 291, click on any of those Amazon links that I have for the products, and go to Amazon and use that when you're going to go shopping on Amazon for gifts. It does help support the show. I get a small commission. doesn't cost you any more, uh, but by going through my link to Amazon, they do give us that credit, and it is a great way when you're looking for gifts on Amazon or just shopping on Amazon for you to help support the show. So thank you for that. Next time on the 40 Plus Fitness Podcast, I'm going to share some of my tips for eating healthy on the road. Until then, have a happy and healthy day. Music